The internet is awash with copycat recipes for all of your favourite restaurant foods, and most of them are in the ballpark of being accurate. That don't look like no McDonald's. You know, like a Hyundai is in the ballpark of being a Ferrari. Who would have thought that an ordinary person at home could actually improve on an icon that's been around for seven decades, took a team of food scientists to perfect, and sells like a billion units a year? Well, apparently it's easy and everyone on YouTube can do it. I'm interested in reverse engineering those famous products so that they actually taste the same. It's a wild concept, I know. Happy रहने के लिए ना hmm? बस हवा और पानी ही काफी है और चीज अंदर फुल ऑफ वंडर Liquid cheese का समंदर. This is the Domino's cheese burst pizza, and it's one of the many kind of ridiculous creations that appear on the menus of restaurant chains around the world, and then disappear just as quickly. Those pesky executives at the big corporations like to fuck with us by casually just removing god tier items from the menu on a whim, which leads to some of them taking on an almost mythical cult-like status. What are you so afraid of? Loving it. Which brings us to the Domino's Double Decadence. It's been available in the UK on and off since 2004. Their menu describes it as a layer of cheese and herb sauce sandwiched between two thin and crispy bases. From searching online, it seems as though Domino's has or has had similar products in other parts of the world, like this double melt pizza, which was around in the US for a short time before being canned. And of course, the cheese burst pizza available in India, which is a similar concept, except thicker and doughier. I mean, that's vile. When Domino's UK took the double decadence off the menu in 2017, people on social media were outraged for a change, and there were petitions to bring it back, although there's a petition for everything these days, isn't there? It finally did return in 2021, prompting various fluff pieces from gossip blogs, aka newspapers, and then, as of the end of 2022, it seems to be vanishing from menus once again. The ingredient information on Domino's website shows that the double decadence base is made up of two components, the two thin and crispy bases and this mysterious liquid cheese betwixt. When I first attempted this pizza years ago, my first instinct was to use flour tortillas because these layers are really thin, way thinner than I'd be able to stretch a pizza base. Then recently I stumbled upon this Domino's training video showing how to actually make a double decadence and would you believe it, they actually do use tortillas. Well, pre-baked, very thin pizza bases. From looking at the ingredients, the only significant difference I can see between the Domino's base and a tortilla is that Domino's contains yeast, whereas tortillas don't. I'm not sure what function yeast is actually providing here. It's certainly not to make it rise or make it puffy because, as you can see, these things are flat as hell. And if it's for flavour, then it's not discernible. Anyway, there's no need to try and replicate the base from scratch because flour tortillas taste literally identical to what Domino's are using in the restaurants. Okay, so now onto this liquid cheese stuff. The ingredients don't give too many clues, it literally just says cheese, but I'm fairly certain it's mostly cream cheese, partly because I remember it having a similar taste and texture, and also because on advertising for the very similar double melt, it does actually say cream cheese. My guess is that it's mostly cream cheese, maybe with a little regular cheese included. So I'm going to start with plain cream cheese and I'm using the cheapest I could find because that is definitely what Domino's are doing. I'm also going to add some shredded Monterey Jack, but I think any mild melting cheese will work. Next ingredient on the list is water, so that goes in as well to thin out the mixture. Then I'm going to put this in the microwave on low just until it all comes together. The next ingredients are stabilizers, sodium phosphates to stop the cheese from drying out and emulsifying salts to stop it from separating. I don't need stabilizers in mine because I don't intend to store it for weeks so we can skip those. Next up is garlic which I'm going to assume is just garlic powder because fresh garlic would be too harsh. As far as I can remember the garlic flavour isn't too powerful so I'm just adding a small amount. Then herbs which is pretty vague but then so is the flavour. I remember it tasting kind of like oregano, so dried Italian herbs is probably a safe bet. So that looks and tastes pretty good, but right now it's still kind of warm. I want to see what it's like when it's cold, because at Domino's restaurants they use it straight from the fridge. Okay, so it's been in the fridge for a while, it's cold, and as you can see it's kind of solid. The cheeses have firmed up and made the mixture way too thick. If this can't be spread onto a pizza base straight from the fridge, then it's not right. They call it liquid cheese for a reason. Now, 
I could add more water to loosen it up, but let's go back to that ingredient list for a sec. There's potassium sorbate, which is used as a preservative, which we don't need. The last ingredient is lactic acid, which is also used as a preservative, but it does have that tangy flavour you get from sour cream or yoghurt. So it's possible it's included here for flavour as a more concentrated alternative to something like buttermilk. That's why I decided to add some buttermilk. It'll help loosen the mixture just like water would, but it also has that lactic acidity. Okay, I put that back in the fridge for a bit and now look, even straight from the fridge we have a consistency that would be easy to spread. I think that looks pretty similar. Now before we assemble this pizza, there's another thing I want to get right which is Domino's tomato sauce. The ingredients list seems pretty straightforward except for the curious inclusion of peppermint. It's almost last on the list which tells me there's only a very small amount in there, lest your tomato sauce tastes like toothpaste. Anyway, to keep it accurate I got some dried peppermint leaves from a beer brewing store. The very last ingredient is citric acid. Presumably this is added because different batches of tomato paste can have different levels of acidity and this will keep it consistent. I'm going to blend all those ingredients together first, have a taste, and then I'll just add a pinch of citric acid. So we've got our pizza base, our liquid cheese, our tomato sauce, and now we can actually build this thing. These are the biggest flour tortillas I could find, 12 inches across. A medium pizza from Domino's in the UK is 11 and a half inches, so I guess that's what we're making. On the training video, they used three heaped tablespoons of liquid cheese for a medium. So I'm spreading it on, leaving a bit of a gap around the edge. The next tortilla goes on top and I'm just pressing down to seal the bases together. That goes on a screen, just like Domino's would do, and then four ounces of sauce. I'm adding cheese and pepperoni and a few jalapenos, then this is going into the oven which has been preheated to 475 degrees Fahrenheit, which is roughly how hot the ovens are in Domino's. After 7 or 8 minutes it's done and honestly it looks pretty good. The cheese is melted, the rim of the crust is just starting to brown, but there's no colour on the bottom and the liquid cheese has dried up a lot. It's not like the sexy borderline X-rated picture on the website. This is actually a common complaint I saw from customers when I was browsing Twitter, pizzas turning up with very little cheese in the middle. So let's try again and this time I'm going to try a higher oven temperature to maybe get some more colour on the undercarriage and I'll add a bit more liquid cheese to compensate for evaporation. I whacked my oven up as high as it'll go, 550 degrees, and after about 7 minutes it's looking pretty much perfect. I've got some browning on the cheese, there's not a lot of colour on the undercarriage but it's a nice golden brown, and the liquid cheese situation is definitely improved. I don't really think it's possible to get it oozing out like on the adverts, not without changing the recipe completely, which isn't the point, but I can definitely taste it and man, it's honestly really delicious. Way more delicious than two tortillas and some cream cheese and a trench coat pretending to be a pizza has any right to be. And actually incredibly easy to make. So give it a try. What are you so afraid of? Loving it? <laughs>